Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Carl Pascarella, Chair of the Board and Executive Committee of the San Francisco Ballet, the oldest professional ballet company in the United States. Carl has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, Carl, for joining us today. It's great to be here. Thank you. So you have a very extensive business career and business resume, and now you are stewarding the San Francisco Ballet through a seminal change in its history. Talk about the idea of professional business management in the context of a nonprofit professional arts organization. I've been on the board since 1995 uh, and have seen some changes, but never changes uh, of the depth and breadth that you see today. Primarily, uh, over the years, there have been a core of go-to donors that you could uh, count on for touring or for a special event or in the case of other art forms, exhibitions. And slowly there's now been a migration uh, away from those key donors, especially in San Francisco, and the necessity to go to a much wider base. Uh, and at the same time, that base is really changing what's important to them in terms of the arts and in terms of what's important to them in terms of their disposable philanthropic dollars. And the economics of the city is changing dramatically with the advent of social media as an economic uh, driver, um, whether it is the mobile communications um, a revolution is embodied by organizations like Facebook and Google and, and others, or you have uh, Uber, or you have uh, Salesforce, which is really about transportable uh, business data. The, the actual basis of the San Francisco economy has shifted uh, so fundamentally, and the sensibility of those donors, of the people who have uh, the, the wherewithal to support institutions like the San Francisco Ballet also have to be taken into account in new ways. Oh, most assuredly, I, and I think that uh, what it does is cause the organizations to have to shift to a much more uh, business-like focus as opposed to uh, the old nonprofit model that just says we've got our group of people, we've got an art form, and they will come. Uh, today, if you look at something like the San Francisco Ballet, you've got two key drivers on the revenue side in macro terms. One is the uh, contributed dollar amount. The other is the earned revenue or the operational dollars by people coming in uh, and filling the seats for performances. Primarily ticket sales. Exactly. Uh, so if you look at those two revenue items, uh, and of course there are subcategories under each one of them, you, you have to now look at addressing how you go after the addressable markets right. in each one. And to do that, you really have to be aggressive. We'll take the development side first. Uh, in a place like San Francisco, you really have to look at concentric heat maps in terms of where are the corporate entities, who are running them, and what kind of connectivity do we have with them through our trustees or through friends of trustees or whatever. And what kind of value they get through an association with the San Francisco Ballet. Well, that gets to the other side, I think, of, of the marketing side. Uh, and so if you go after the corporate entity and you identify who they are, and you then create outreach through development that's much different from the way you did it before, whether it's pop-up events, whether it's going to their place of business and explaining to them that ballet is as close to athleticism as the arts get. So you should be able to embrace this as a different type of art form. Educationally, so much uh, money is spent in San Francisco in the, the new 
uh, enterprise groups on education and furthering the development of people who don't have uh, direct association with the ballet or other art forms. We have a phenomenal education program. So it's all about looking at what attributes you have that will add value and give them a feeling of wanting to participate and add value to their lives or their corporate entities. So what we're attempting to do, and have, I think we've got a lot of folks really engaged now, is to take the business side of the ballet up to the same level that the artistic the side. side has been. And that's something that then they tend to work much more closely together, collaborate on things. And when you get the artistic side able to talk to the business side and you have mutual respect and mutual targets of opportunity, you have synergies that drive the business. So many nonprofits are what I call operational marketers. They look at transactions, this event, this opportunity. And today, we have to run it as a strategic marketing group that talks about brand, that talks about outreach, that talks about what is the vision and how are we adding value to potential patrons or donors or whomever we might be addressing. And the patron base is, is transforming even as we speak. The employees of these uh, large corporations and the citizenry of San Francisco is evolving considerably. We're not talking about not only demographic shifts, but we're also talking about sensibility shifts. So how do you connect to people and that connection and evidence of that connection also needs to be translated into conscious relevance of the company to the citizenry of San Francisco, of the businesses of San Francisco, of, uh, of everyone who, would, who is part of your success. We're lucky enough to be at the epicenter of a lot of the social media large enterprises and we've been able to work with them to understand how to use the uh, attributes that they have to reach out, but it's a very, very uh, different kind of an event that you have to uh, drive in order to get the first, not even the hearts and minds, but to get introduction right. to the people and to reach them. For instance, we bring them to a short ballet event that's in the opera house but we serve drinks and we serve past hors d'oeuvres and it's a much more casual environment. And very accessible. Very, very accessible. One of the things that you have to do, I think, in the performing arts, opera or ballet or symphony, is break down the walls of intimidation and make it much, much more accessible. Now, one of the things that I find so fascinating is how you are shifting the role of the board and engaging board members who have the, these various competencies, these various business competencies, to, to drive forward this transformation in an appropriate way. So it's a very interesting balance because you're engaging board members, but you're not having the board members subvert the role of the staff. What we have done at the ballet uh, is to come up to that line and assist management because people on the board have experiences that are very diverse and very deep and it's challenging to get them to get engaged and get involved. Uh, for a number of years you would sit as the chair of a committee for could be three, four, five years and that's not a bad thing. But what I've done uh, is basically uh, eliminated the chair, vice chair, and gone to two co-chairs of every committee. Uh, and in doing that, I took the incumbent, because they're doing a good job, but also the breadth of, of work that's necessary and the transformational types of issues that we've uh, talked about. I brought in somebody that was relatively new to the board to co-chair. 
and they've been working together so we get a new set of eyes. And the collaboration between the two has been phenomenal, whether it was marketing or development or finance or a, a what we call strategic alignment that's more a, a strategic direction type of a committee. And, and by having the co-chair type of arrangement, you get people engaged, you get more people engaged. And we encourage people that aren't chairs that if you see a project or a target of opportunity for you that you think is worthwhile, go after it. Total transparency between any committee and any trustee on the board to be able to get engaged, to get involved. If it's something you think should be done, then go ahead and do it. One of the things that I find so interesting is that in all of our conversations, you also maintain art in the center. There is a uh, old saw in ballet that everybody is funded through the Nutcracker, and every, uh, every company is so tired of, of uh, performing Nutcracker. Um, but one of the things that I, uh, that I find to be truly interesting about this, this business conversation is that beyond the business conversation is support of a vital art. It's funny you talk about the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker is a, a very good revenue generator for any ballet. But more importantly, and what we focused on uh, this year, uh, which again is a project brought in by one of the young trustees, uh, we're hosting a, a huge luncheon before a matinee of the Nutcracker. It's a tremendous you know, event. Uh, one that will raise revenue. But more importantly, we've got young families that are so hard, they don't go to the ballet every night. Right. We now have a group, an entirely new group of young families bringing their children to a two or three hour long event, meeting dancers, going behind the scenes. And we're going to reach out to them six or eight weeks later. And we're going to say, hey, we've got another event for you, whether it's Cinderella, whether whatever it might be, to bring the families in again. So we're reaching out. It's not just the event itself. It's being smart enough to reach out to a new group of subscribers, patrons, and bring them closer to you. If we get just 10% of the people to come again and enjoy the ballet, just the parents, We've moved the needle significantly. So that's the way you have to think. Not just as the, the nutcracker or any other single performance as an event, but rather how do you reach out to a new area and execute based on the, the, the we have so many things that, that we can, I don't want to say sell, it's probably crass, but that we can, uh, reach out and get to the market with. We should be taking advantage of those and thinking about the ancillary opportunities that are around them. That's what business is about. That's how you drive businesses and that's how you have to drive the ballet or any other nonprofit. A strong company, amazing art on the stage, business excellence, ambition, aggression, Carl Pascarella, thank you so much for sharing with us the transformation being engendered by the board and by the staff of the San Francisco Ballet, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure.